Welcome back. In the last video, I gave you an overview of the IntelliTeam Designer software using an existing circuit. In the next couple of videos, we will build an IntelliTeam SG automatic restoration system from scratch. We begin with the first step in the process, drawing a circuit. Here is a diagram of the circuit we will be drawing. This single line diagram includes three generation sources, two normally closed interrupter fault interrupters, a normally open IntelliNode interface module connected to a third party device in the substation, a normally open SCADAMATE switch, and a three-way VISTA switch with two motor-operated switches normally closed. To start a new designer file, click File, New. Let's go ahead and add more drawing space by clicking the Auto Hide button to the right of the Configuration Display window. Perfect. Let's begin by adding the sources. On the standard toolbar, Click the Add Source button to highlight it. Next, in the drawing space, click where you'd like to add your first source. Then add the other two sources to match our diagram. To keep things organized, Designer has several alignment tools. To align objects horizontally, Highlight the objects you want aligned, in our case Source 1 and Source 2, and then click either the Align Top or Align Bottom buttons to align them. Objects can also be aligned vertically by clicking the Align Left or Align Right buttons. Let's draw the wires between the three sources. Click the Add Wire button to highlight it. Place your mouse cursor over one of the sources, Click on one of the connection points and drag the wire from one source to the other. Connect the third source by running the wire from the connection point to the adjacent line. If performed correctly, Designer will automatically establish the wire connection. Now it's time to add the switches. Let's start with the interrupters. Click on the Components drop down menu and make sure Interrupter is selected. Since we'll be adding a couple of these switches, highlight the Repeat Insert button. Then, click Add Device Switch and click anywhere along the wire to add the switch to the circuit. Add the second interrupter switch along the same wire. To add the IntelliNode switch, click the Components drop-down menu and select IntelliNode. Once again, click Add Device Switch and place the switch near the source to the right. I'll do the same for the Scatamate switch, but I'll place it along the third feeder. Adding the Vista switch is a bit different because it's a two switch device. Click the Add Two Switches button to highlight it and place the switch near the third source. By default, Designer adds the pad mounted switch with dual voltage sensors. To change it to a Vista, click the Select Item button, highlight the switch, and in Visual Properties, select 6802 Vista in the Device Type field. To change our IntelliNode and SCADAMATE switches to normally open, click the Toggle Switch Open Close button and then click on the IntelliNode switch followed by the SCADAMATE switch. There are also other draw functions within Designer. For example, if our Vista gear included manually operated switches, you can exclude them from the IntelliTeam system by either clicking the Exclude Include button for normally closed switches, or the Exclude Include Open button for normally open switches, and then selecting the switch. Notice that the switch becomes grayed out once excluded. Since our gear includes motor operators on both ways, 
we will insert it back into the circuit. To completely remove a switch or source from the circuit, click the Delete button and then select the switch you'd like to remove. To undo this action, click the Undo button. Designer can clean this up some more by spacing the switches evenly throughout the circuit. Click the Select Item button, highlight the three switches along the horizontal wire, and then click Space Horizontally to space them out. Then highlight the two switches along the vertical wire and click Space Vertically. For normally closed switches next to the source, we recommend placing the X terminal of the interruptor switch, if configured for direction 1, facing the normal source, which is the case for DS1. Also, for non interruptor switches next to the source, such as DS5, the sensor side terminal should face the normal source, which is the case here. For all other normally closed switches, the sensor location doesn't matter as long as it matches what's installed in the field. For normally open devices, it usually doesn't matter where you place the switch terminals unless the switch is a tie sub, meaning it's the first switch after a substation source, which is the case with this IntelliNode switch. In this situation, the sensor side terminal needs to face the alternate source, or source 2, which is the case in our circuit. If this wasn't the case, the terminals can be flipped by clicking the Toggle Terminals button and then selecting the desired switch. Click it again to flip it back. Now, let's make some cosmetic changes to our circuit. Let's begin by changing the names of our switches to something that makes more sense. Click the Select Item button, click on the desired switch, and then go to the Visual Properties panel and change the name field to Switch 1. Let's also rename all the other switches. Next, let's add a title to our circuit. Click the Add Text button to highlight it, and then click anywhere in the drawing space, preferably above the circuit. Click the Select Item button, highlight the newly created text, and change the name to North Ridge Boulevard, which is the street in Chicago where SNC Electric Company is located. The font field in the Visual Properties panel allows you to increase or decrease the size of the text. Let's increase it to size 30. We are now officially done drawing our circuit. It's time to validate it to make sure that there aren't any errors or warnings. Click the Validate button. Five errors or warnings were found in our circuit. Let's investigate. Click OK to exit out of the window. The tab in the lower left-hand corner displays all of the errors and warnings. Click it. The error messages indicate that our device RTU addresses are currently set to zero, which Designer does not allow. We won't be able to address these issues till we configure the circuit in the next video. The last step is to save the circuit by clicking File, Save As. Give the file a name and click Save to create a new file with a .vnet file extension. This completes our video on drawing the circuit. Please stay tuned for the next video to learn how to configure the circuit.